All right, we're live. Hello, welcome back to Broussard Homestead. Amy's here. She's getting her some coffee. We're running a little late tonight. I'm always late. Uh, so we're going to say hello to Mama Bear. And then there's Albert. Albert, who <laughs> says, we deleted his comment. I don't know what. I, I wasn't here to delete your comment. Sorry. Sorry you got all butt hurt over that. I'm not even sure how that happened. Uh, Bayou Dawn is here. Southern Boy Prepper, All the Things Acres, Michigan Daffodil, Timmy Eaker, Christine Beetle made it here at the beginning. Awesome. Uh, let's see. I think that's everybody. Oh, just exploring every path. Hey, Jeep, what's happening? Just heard a tornado has gone through Seminole. Oh no. Uh, well, when Amy gets here with her notebook, we'll, we'll be sure and add the people of Seminole, Oklahoma to our prayer list. Sorry to hear that. Curia built on the rock, Allison Halleck, Mind and Body Co. Good to see you all. Welcome to the live stream. The Thursday night live stream on Wednesday this week. And uh, in, in case you don't know, the reason why we're doing it on Wednesday every third week is because I work the Thursday. Like, I'll be at work tomorrow. So that's just how my schedule works. D, good to see you. You've had too much coffee. Hey, Miss Lippy, welcome. I got my custom made Mama Bear mug that I'm drinking out of tonight. Might need to send them some. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Boudreaux's bus face. For, for diaper rash? What is I'm not sure what you mean by that. I mean, I know what Boudreaux's butt face is, but I'm not, I'm not seeing the correlation. I must be missing something. Okay. Wow, thunder nearby. Uh, yeah, we're supposed to, I think we're expecting a thunderstorm tomorrow evening into tomorrow night. Yep. Down our way. It's a cold front. Really? <laughs> yep. How's that supposed to affect the weather? Uh, just like cooler, slightly. <laughs> oh, everybody's commenting on your hair already. Thank you. Nobody said a word about mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Even Big Bear. <laughs> Welcome to the live stream, Jason. Yeah, we're getting the severe weather tomorrow. Lippy follows the the weather pretty closely, so. I usually just follow Lippy. <laughs> Ham and beans with fried potato and cornbread for dinner. Nice. So <laughs> we had um, a homemade pasta sauce with a lot of ingredients came right out of the backyard, out of the gardens and stuff. And then uh, we served that over zucchini noodles, which we grew the zucchini. So that was really cool. Prepping tip, <laughs> don't eat yellow snow. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Well, we don't have that problem because we don't get Benjamin, snow. Yeah. What on the the rare the rare chances that, or the rare times that we do get snow this far south, uh, usually our snowmen are brown because there's so little snow <laughs> that there's a ton of <laughs> mud dirt and mud packed into the snowmen. Thank you guys for the the kind comments about that. Um, we went. Henry went yesterday. straight to the big news. <laughs> of course he did. Thanks. Um, we went and got haircuts <laughs> yesterday morning, yesterday afternoon, midday. Whatever. We worked outside, had showers before we went. <laughs> yeah, because uh, <laughs> ew. Yeah, because it's really hot and humid. We're expecting to see ninety in the in the next few weeks. Uh, no, in the next next few, few days. days. I'm sorry, next few days. That's what I meant to say. Hey, Nanny Joyce, welcome. Don't eat brown snow either. No. <laughs> Don't. You. You're going to open a door. Let's not. I tried to tell him that last live I was on his. Hardneck Farms. Watching uh, tornadoes on the ground in Seminole, Oklahoma. Got hit. Pray for them. Mm, right. You know. Yeah, I knew, else, I knew that. Saw that. Reagan, there's coffee, but you're not here, so you don't get any. Yes, uh, Miss Lippy, that is one of the peace lilies from a finance uh, service. Um, this is the one that my nanny held on to. 
The other one is right there. Let me see if I can show that. How heavy is it? It's here. Yeah. Can you get it? Mm -hmm. I'm moving around all the time. It's it's bigger and in bloom. It's really pretty. I don't know if where oh shoot. There's a chair there. <laughs> can they see it? I think so. I gotta move the chat. Oh yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> it is kind of beefy. Big Bear says they hit 90 today. Wow. I know we're, we've been getting real close, and with the heat index, uh, I'm sure we're much higher. Yeah. Oh, the heat our, index has been 90. Our humidity right. has really moved in. Hey, Melinda. Good to see you. I don't know. Oh, there's Prepper Book Club. Almost missed you there. It's supposed to be a hundred the one. On this Saturday. is the croton that I repotted recently. These are all plants from the service. Yep. The memorial service. And they're still alive. Yay. Is that all? No, the uh, little ones are. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's one that's just hanging out in our bathtub it's, because it just well, needs a humid, humid climate. Yeah, go figure. It's not humid. Chris Tibetz, Suburban Hillbilly, welcome. I don't have a pen. I have my paper, but I don't have a pen. Let me check my pockets like I'm at work. Right. <clears throat> <sighs> yeah, they they do love it by the windows. The problem is we've got the really high efficiency windows that don't yeah. allow UV light in. So <laughs> These actually work though. Plants can really struggle even by next to our windows no these are these are okay these are good. um these are made for indoors hey, they, they only need indirect lighting so they work pretty well but um we have that a furry feather i don't i don't know what's the name of the plant i haven't been watching the news jason i don't maybe you could fill us in if you could sum it up um enough i don't know if can. i don't normally do well <laughs> with house plants but these are doing really well Saffron based so, self sufficiency. Good to see you. Um, we have one that's called Furry Feather our, um, Prayer Plant. And it needs higher humidity. So I've been spritzing it with a spray bottle full of rainwater. And uh, so I, I had it in the bathroom so it could kind of drip because it was. Nice. Bunny, huh. Bunnies and meat chicks. I have a prayer plant outside. They get partial sun and they are huge. Also live in Louisiana. Very cool. We don't have anywhere that they would get partial sun. Well, we're working on that though. Yeah, <clears throat> not right now anyway. But these are actually, um, the only one that's mine is the great big piece lily that I, that I <laughs> hauled over here. But um, these are going back to Nanny's house as soon as she gets to the new house. I do have my phone close by. <laughs> okay, wait. Uh, I missed something. Prepping advice. Grow medicinals for teas, tinctures, and salves. Yes. Yes, definitely. Gil, good to see you. Camp Patton Family Compound. I have been working on medicinals. I planted some more mullein today. Say, yeah, that was this morning. It was. We, we've I'm had getting a busy so day. mixed up on which day is which. But, we got up uh, at six this morning before dawn. Yeah. The birds are playing. I love being oh, the whole wildlife nearby. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, so we got up at six this morning to water and feed fertilize our plants. And, and uh, I say fertilize. It's um, fish emulsion. But right. Because it's getting so hot these days mm -hmm. uh, already, which I say already like it's not normal for us, but it, it totally is. All right. Um, Yo, know, that's totally up to you, whatever um, account you want to use. Uh, we do things very, very early in the morning. Why is your, as, uh, your picture in the top left of my screen? I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, guys. I have to make a little bit of noise. Watch the grapes. 
Well, you're fine. You do what you gotta do. Yeah, we're. I mean, it's the kitchen. <laughs> That's Abby, by the way. If anybody wants to say hi, I'm sure everyone does. <laughs> Actually home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's actually home. So, uh, yeah, so we've got a, um, uh, I know we've talked about this a little bit in the past couple of weeks, live streams. <clears throat> Sorry, what? I'm updating my prayer. Okay. With, so it's a uh, Seminole, Oklahoma. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Uh, yep, there they are. The Hello <laughs> Abbeys are rolling in. <laughs> uh, so we've got a, our, our front yard, first of all, we live behind another house, so we're not right at the highway. Uh, we don't really have road frontage on our property, but uh, we've got a half acre front yard that is ours, and uh, we've, been, we've started to develop. It, it sat pretty pretty dormant and was just lawn for the past, uh, I don't it know how long have we had it, about four or five years. It still is lawn. Uh, a lot of lawn, way is, too much. It lawn. is. So what we're doing is slowly but surely, little by little, is adding in uh, plantings, and hopefully to eventually turn that into like a food forest. But to use enough ornamentals, especially like around the edges, to hide the fact that it is a food source. Um, for if things really go sideways. Already, there's a lot of people out in town. Uh, I recognize them from a long time ago and stuff. And, uh, they say, hey, where are you living at now? And I say, behind my mom's house. And they were, they're like, I didn't even know there was a house back there. It's not. That's what I tell them. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's invisible. <clears throat> you really can't see it from the road unless you're looking for it. But um, right, it's easy to just pass on by. There's a there lot of people that have been trying to come here and just totally miss it. Well, some of that is GPS Karen. takes you. Yeah, the all GPS kinds of crazy places. But um, the the sales guy that was doing the video surveillance system or whatever, um, he came by here. He's he had been roaming for a couple of days and said he passed it like six or seven times a day before he realized it was here. <laughs> yeah. Dusty, hello and welcome. We are in Southwest Louisiana, zone 9A, I think it is. Mm -hmm. It is zone 9 for sure. It is 9A. Kate has looked it up for me. Okay, zone 9A, there you go. <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, we're, we're only 30 miles inland from the coast of, uh, the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. So we get a lot of humidity uh, especially when the wind is from the south, yeah, so it stays like <clears throat> all the time. Stays super warm. We have a very long growing season. Uh, we don't. Know, it's a pretty tropical climate here. We don't know what frozen frozen soil is. That's not <laughs> a thing that we have ever experienced. Uh, and rarely do we get snow. Well, even when we get snow, it like starts to melt almost immediately when it touches the ground so we get more of a slush sometimes we'll get rarely well i say rarely. it's it's less rare that we would get like a wintry mix is what they call it um uh, it's like snow sleet freezing rain it's kind of a mm. as soon as it like touches you even your jacket it, it melts you know <clears throat> Abby's making weird stuff and it's pretty entertaining to watch. It's not weird. It's really good. All right. All right. So <clears throat> if we could just maybe interject some advice uh, throughout throughout the live stream tonight. Um, I looked up because I have so much trouble staying like focused. That's wild. Can you like Scooch away to the other side of the counter or something. <laughs> there you go. Um, so I, I, yeah, I have issues like staying, staying on topic, staying in the direction. So what I've done is, I looked up um, a reference basically online. I just, I just googled like advice for beginner homesteaders and advice for beginner preppers. So um, um, 
I'm kind of cheating tonight. Barb said, I turned my whole front yard and backyard into a garden. I live in the middle of the city. Can't hide that. Oh, well. Yeah, but even still, you are hidden some, and you're inviting wildlife and pi pollinators, and, you know, you're growing your own food. So that in itself is a huge step. Mama, Mama Bear says she fell asleep waiting. What you need, Mama Bear, is a cup of coffee in a custom mug. That's what you need. By the way, this custom mug came from Mama Bear. Uh, so, um, of course, the first tip is pretty uh, self-explanatory, pretty common. And it's, it's just start small. <laughs> if, you're, uh, if you're a beginner and you need to get started, start small. Homesteading and prepping. But that goes for both. It doesn't happen overnight. It's an ongoing journey. It's What's a that task. huge, huge um, goal. It's a life change. It really is. Like I said, we moved here. Um, well, it'll be right at seven years at the end of this month that we've been here. Mm -hmm. And we, turn, we have turned a neglected donkey pasture into... I mean, we're, we're not there yet. We're not where we want to be, and we may never be, but it's a work in progress, and we're, we're turning it into a, a self-sustaining homestead. Well, it's a working homestead, you know? Right, right. Kaylin, good to see you. Yes, a definite life change. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, it is intentional. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that moves us right on into tip number two, which is don't rush things. Uh, you know, we, we live this lifestyle to escape the rat race. Don't bring it with you. And, and I was telling Amy just the other day, uh, sometimes I feel like the same stresses from the rat race. I feel that on the homestead sometimes because I want to get so much done before the season changes. Mm -hmm. Like I give myself deadlines and they're, they're just make believe. They're not real deadlines because whatever we, we can get what as much as we need to get done by the end of the, the season. And then we move on to the next seasonal task. Death claw. Welcome. Okay. Um, <clears throat> best advice on what to tackle after stocking food. What would be your number two item to tackle after food? Um, water. Actually, water would be right up there with food. Um, so I'm going to kind of talk about that and then I'll move on to something else. But um, we, what we, the way we prep and the way we homestead is, I, I'd say it's multi-layered. Uh, like, for example, with water, we have uh, we have water sources like right now on a daily basis, we use. I can't say city water because we don't live in the city, but a community like. It is city water. Though. Water comes from a water main. That's what normally <laughs> comes into our house. Uh, I've got rainwater collect collection catchment. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> awesome, Melinda. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Thank you, Melinda. A whole year. That's amazing. Wow. No kidding. <laughs> I had to read it. <laughs> um, so let's see. The water, the water comes in through the pipes. We've got water collection from a 500 square foot uh, roof. So that, that's a quick collection. We can, we can hold up to 255 gallons there. And I, I plan to expand that. We've got uh, a a pond that's probably three quarters of an acre. Uh, yeah, so pretty much endless water. Yeah. So and we also have the we've um, got water filters, the drainage canal in the back. If we absolutely had to, we do buy some um, cases of bottled water, but we go through those because we. That's yeah, that, but that's, that's for use outside with. when we're working. Um. <clears throat> so if you want to go beyond that, if you want to count water as food and you want me to answer something else, I would say probably first aid. Mm -hmm. Not only items, but also knowledge. Well, we're not, we're not going to the store and constantly buying food and, and stocking it away. 
some things we are, but um, we're canning a lot. So we're, we're constantly rebuilding that, um, that food supply. So we're, we're canning, we're dehydrating, we're fermenting, you know, all these things that we're doing to, to continually restock as we use things. Rabbits and chicks. What's happening here in just five minutes. That's awesome. That's quick. I saw that on Facebook, Lippy. They got uh, baby chickies and they're cute. Yeah, I love they're, that. They are freaking cute. <clears throat> Water is the number one failure of most preppers. Exactly. But um, it's not just stockpiling water because, I mean, water, that water is going to have a date that, you know, a use by date. You're, I don't want. And I don't want to be drinking 20 year old water. Well, some people that's think been sitting in a some plastic people bottle. think how can water have an expiration date? Technically, the water doesn't. The plastic packaging does. Right. Oh, well, yeah. That's that's the thing. But um, having a way to filter your own water or, um, you know, Pull water from the air with a dehumidifier and have it drink right. right into a water filter like a Berkey. No. Small drink. That's cool. I was going to, that was going to be my, my question, how you run it without power. And you answered that. And you didn't leave me a question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a great idea. Well, we could definitely pull water from the air. Oh, we totally could. <laughs> yeah. Well, water that's 25 feet deep for emergency and have a, hand, a well hand pump. We actually have a well hand pump that, but it's um, straight into the pond or out of. Really, well, yeah, <clears throat> but um, the reason for that, it's like a thousand dollars to put in a well here just for a hand pump. Which as, as we're getting older and the kids are moving out and stuff, a thousand dollars seems more attainable, more reachable. Well, yeah. So <clears throat> that's, that's exactly why Kaylin. Yeah. You can't. You, you I mean, really what are you going to do? Fill store. up your apartment with nothing but water, and then you have no room for food. You just It's just not feasible. It's not wise to try to store all of the water that you need. A treatment or a filter is a better way to to, uh, to have that extra layer. Right. Where, to, that's more long-term. It's more sustainable. Right. Um, as far as the pond water, we can... We have the ability to um, make a filter with sand, rocks, and um, charcoal to filter out the majority of it. You can also run pre-run it through um, like coffee filters to get all the gunk. No, um, so coffee filters is a good thing to stock up on. Gray man prepping is probably far more knowledgeable than I am, but as far as I know. I don't think there's a filter out there that can remove chemicals from water. Mm. That can. It can remove chemicals? I think so. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure. No. I don't know about that. Oh, Lord. Gary said her well is 420 feet. There you go, Kaylin. That's that's another thing that we have prepped too is coffee filters for pre-filtering. Exactly. Yes. That helps to make your it helps your filters to last longer. Mm -hmm. They don't get uh, the carbon filter elements can capture some chemicals. Okay. One thing I want to work on is making <laughs> um, some biochar, like making our own charcoal. And that's something I haven't experimented with yet. Yes, your filter can filter chemicals. Huh? The space station filter can. $50,000, <laughs> you know, pocket. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, you know, I know that the filter the Alexa that we have, Pure has the... That's Alexa Pure. That's the one. That it has the one that um, it can filter out medications <laughs> and heavy, yeah, heavy metals and chemicals. So, oh. yep. Yeah. All right. And we've got the the great big stainless steel. I think it holds a gallon or a gallon and a quarter or something like that. Holler homestead. The third tip on this list is start your own garden patch. I think pretty much all of us here in the chat who have 
the space to do so already practice this. Um, I wouldn't say we have a patch. I, <laughs> maybe we have more of a patchwork of gardens. They're everywhere. We've got we're growing stuff all over the place. Well, we're constantly building and adding something else, and yeah, change our filter one once a year. Uh, we haven't had to change our filter. Um, we we don't use tons and tons of water that's through the Alexa Pure because my refrigerator filter has a similar on it. Um, it also does the pharmaceuticals and the chemicals. It's like one step down from the Alexa Pure filter. Um, I did a comparison of the two. So a lot of the water that we use is out of the refrigerator filter um, just because, it, you know, especially our drinking water. Oh, when you, okay. When you start removing chemicals and such, that cuts the life of the filter by 90 plus percent. Wow. Yikes. Southern Bless Homestead. Hello. Building a home place is a daily duty and adding is a given. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm constantly trying to figure out where I can put stuff and you know, this needs a little more shade. What can I put here to, you know, create the shade? And, stuff? and we're moving, we're moving banana trees into the front yard, and um, we're looking at putting um, hmm, blueberries, and we're adding comfrey all over the place because we have it. Yeah, comfrey is such an amazing. Excuse me. <laughs> Amazing permaculture plant mm -hmm. because it has so many uses. And there is Southern Blessed Homestead. <laughs> Hi, Patty Mac. Did you get your car fixed? Yes. Awesome. I I, Mac just changed the battery, I believe. Oh, is that all? It was? Oh, I'm Thankfully, glad it was something yeah. something easy though. Hey, honey badgers. Well, I was worried about them. Do you have city <laughs> water? If not, use a coconut filter in your ice box. It works best for well water. No, we have city water here. I I don't know if I could handle well well water. I grew up on well water. I know, and it's stunk. And I'm just fine. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant. What comfrey do you have? Uh, we have the Bocking 14 variety. It, mm -hmm. It's it's only propagated through root cuttings. It's sterile. It does not make seed. <clears throat> yeah, and it's great. And we um, did that. We chose that one. It was dan from plant abundance uh we, we used to watch his channel a lot he's got a food forest in california which is um same growing zone. same growing zone as we're in yeah. so uh and he he suggested bocking 14 comfrey which so that's what we got um, and we love it some of it is in bloom right now yeah and, and the bees yeah. love it one thing we're learning is that you can put comfrey around fruit trees and citrus trees and it helps to feed your trees but it also helps <clears> to <throat> act, act as a living mulch because it it gets like i have a plant that's what three foot across or pretty close to it oh, the comfrey yeah and uh so it really it it helps to choke out the grass and stuff around the citrus trees and around the fruit trees but it also, because it mines for minerals um, deep into the ground, it brings those up. And I didn't realize how much it worked until we really started separating the comfrey this year. And I gave a couple of plants to my mom. She planted them on the outside of a rose bed, one on either side. And when look, standing in front of it and looking at it, you can tell the difference in the two roses next to the comfrey versus the ones in the center that's crazy that's wild drastic improvement Alice. like there's more blooms the 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 greenery is just deeper and darker colors so now she told me she's got to get well, some more to put in there as the comfrey grows just like any plant the lower leaves the oldest leaves start to die off well those compost in place and those minerals end up back in the soil and it's uh it's just good for the soil Allison says that she got an elderberry from us in 2019. Survived the move. 
Moo. Okay. Uh, last year I thought it died, and this year it came right back. That's cool. That's awesome. Elderberry are pretty resilient. I actually saw a post on Facebook. It was a Louisiana gardeners group. Somebody had this plant on a fence line, and they have been chopping it oh, down, yeah. um, spraying it with Roundup, all kinds of herbicides, even burned it. And it came right. And it came right back. <laughs> Who go home, stay? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of people like that drives me nuts. I'm some turning of, the air down because I'm hot. Some of the people in this, the Louisiana Gardener group, I'm pretty sure. I would imagine that Lippy is in that group on Facebook. Maybe, maybe not. But uh, these people like <laughs> mm, so many of them. They just they get on my nerve. There's a few reasons why. They want to they want to put chemicals on everything everything they want to like just the herbicides Never in heard of that group pesticide it louisiana, yeah, louisiana gardeners. gardeners group is what it's called on facebook uh, but um you you are going to be so aggravated after reading that those posts oh and, and the ones that uh what is this you know it's a point yeah. what is this what is this it's a weed like Okay, yeah, but, but I need an I need an ID. Somebody like, will post kind of a picture weed? of like a peace lily and say, "What is this?" And you'll get poison ivy. Oh God! Everything is poison ivy to some people. And it drives you know, me or insane. It's a weed. <laughs> like, oh my goodness! <laughs> Lippy, <don't get> that. <laughs> oh, that that oh, group. Man. Either they're gonna they're gonna boot her out within like twenty four hours, or it's gonna become. The most hilarious uh, lippy stress relief. <laughs> they, they get under my skin, those people sometimes. Uh, somebody most recently I've there never was, heard it was of a, a Puerto Rican red sweet potato. Somebody showed uh, somebody posted a That's picture. It was a baby pecan tree. And somebody said poison oak. Bruh. Okay, you gotta stop. <laughs> you guys he does this all day long. He'll bring me his phone. Did you see this? Yes. Yes, dear. Yeah, he giggles. <laughs> <laughs> it's that dumb. Yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy. All right. So tip number four uh, is get to know your soil. Something that <laughs> we to leave the group. still have not done, but we're overcoming the fact that we haven't done it, is to get our, our uh, soil test done from LSU. I don't know it's been we working so far, it, and so. but I've heard so many people that have gotten their soil test and they get the results back and they don't know how to read them. So we send ours out, and they'll probably, they'll probably come back and say, "That's not soil. Throw that on a turntable and make a plate out of it because it's so cool, so much." Right. <clears throat> hey, Mary Beth. And just like you should know your soil, the tip number five is be familiar with your climate. Oh, I'm familiar. <laughs> I'm so familiar. How do you so mistake high. a nut tree from poison ivy? Exactly. Exactly. Y'all, I am highly allergic to poison ivy. I can spot that stuff in a field from like a mile away. Most commonly. And I can see the, the issue. I can see the confusion on this one. A lot of people think that pepper vine is poison ivy those are those look kind of similar no i've seen somebody label <laughs> poison ivy on an elderberry tree i mean that group is just i'm i'm about to just some, out some people just like if you don't know it's okay it's okay not to know but the, that's the kind of stuff those those wrong answers so confidently wrong <laughs> that's what gets people hurt <laughs> Gary says, I got rocks, not soil. <laughs> uh, Kaylin says, I buy potting soil since I don't have my own patch of ground to plant directly in second floor deck here. So obviously you don't need a soil sample. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't know what poison ivy is when living in the South? Exactly. And I did. I, I mean, I didn't until I was a was teenager. A time, there was a time that... Because I would I would work around the pepper vine all the time, and I thought that was poison ivy. I mean, I thought I was just immune. 
<laughs> nope. <laughs> no. Like, I've got the little rash, or the redness from the rash. Um, will rash. elderberry grow with blueberries and raspberries? Sure. Well, just don't let your elderberry overtake your blueberries, because blueberries are full sun. So don't let them overshade them too much. Oh. Now, a little bit of afternoon shade would be okay. Yeah, I've seen that one too, Matt. The oh, we planted the elderberry sticks. It's yeah. just it's doing great. Water for period. Water for sure purification is far more important than water storage. That exactly. Is right. That is right. Yeah, because like Sean, North Shore <laughs> preparedness, he is in a, an apartment or rent house or you know it's it's small because it's just him. I mean, who would rent a four bedroom house just for one person? You know, so he's he's got to get creative with his storage. You know, I mean, heck, we've got a three bedroom double wide, and uh, we still have to get creative with storage. Zach and Chrissy were here that day, and she she kind of giggled because there's sweet potato jars under my bed. Yeah, <laughs> she could see it from the doorway, and I was like, well, oops. Sean at North Shore preparing to store sugar in his what did you say wardrobe? Is that what you call it? It's a dresser. It, yeah, it's a dresser. Metal for breakfast. I'm not testing. Yeah, hey, I food. know him too. I'll plant what I can and see what I. That's that's what we've been doing, and we are successful sometimes, and we fail other times. But I say fail. You know what though? It's not a failure. It's not a failure until you give up. It's definitely not a failure if you learn something. That's that's what I'm saying. If you keep trying, then it's just experience. My property is too dry for poison ivy. I don't have any. Oh wow. Oh, I need to go over there. Flour and meal and <laughs> sugar in my cedar chest. Water <laughs> and filter nice. prep is equal for desserts. Wait. Deserts? Where are we at? Desert dwellers, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Um, that's a good question. You are in the desert area. Do you um, collect your own rainwater? Is there a rainwater? Well, do you know what rainwater is? I'm Stop. <laughs> they get rain. It's just not as often as we do. You only fail when you don't try. Exactly. This is true. Well, I mean, even even if you, you try and you don't succeed, you learn something from it. Tip number six is avoid unnecessary experience expenses i think that's that was probably our tip number one well I, okay mama bear says we don't get enough rain <laughs> to um the only way you don't get enough rain was if you got none because well, some some water storage is better than nothing well unless you go through it so quickly i mean well sure. some places it's illegal to collect rainwater. like there's people out there that really believe that creeks and, and rivers are going to dry up if too many people collect rainwater. Seriously. But you're using the rainwater to garden with... So You're putting it back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know Southern Bless knows what uh, poison ivy is. <laughs> um One week every six months. Holy moly. Michigan Daffodil says just checked in. Elderberry bush planted last summer, 12 to 8 inches with lots of leaves. Awesome. awesome. You guys still have snow up there? Are y'all still frozen? We're sweating and I feel bad, kind of. Because, like, like Sean, way up north up there is probably still like getting freezing temperatures and stuff. I think I would be a rebel if they told me I couldn't collect rainwater. Right? right? It doesn't make any sense. I'd be like, that's my swimming pool. I'm not collecting nothing. I'm swimming in it. It's snow maybe every five years. Yeah, us, it's like every eight, maybe. Except more recently, it was... Uh... Ooh, 64 nice i bet 80s it was next week 
Oh, I bet that was beautiful weather. That's amazing. So are you guys starting to be able to plant now or still going to wait a while? Gil, that's a hell of a deal. 275-gallon IBC totes for $40 each, and they only had potato alcohol in them. No chemicals. That's that's excellent. Wow. Too bad they don't still have the potato alcohol in them. <laughs> right. Uh, I'll wait a bit on planting. Yeah. Uh, see, I would be scared to plant anything up north. Asparagus and I don't know. Chook cherries. Choke cherries the wind will be is up a lot. Very good. I've heard uh, it's pretty windy in the desert. Death bar, are you are you talking about is that a wild asparagus that you mean? Or is that like your asparagus? I'm curious because I don't think I've ever seen a wild asparagus. We have the the Smilax, which is uh, like a sawbriar, and uh, it's very similar to asparagus when you eat it. Wow. Okay, uh, Southern Bliss said they're going to hit the 90s next week. <laughs> I'm not ready for that. I'm not either. Yeah, we are. Um, I think by Wednesday of next week. Good idea, Miss Lippy. I think we were supposed to... Um, we're supposed to hit 90 by Friday of next yeah, week. But you know what? We're close enough right now. I'm well, right now. the heat it index was like 91 it. yesterday or today. I don't remember. One of those days. We got out there yesterday um, with uh, just shovels and was taking out tree stumps. No. That was small tree stumps, but it, we're clearing out an area. Cool crops three to four weeks ago. Nothing frost tender until May 30th. Oh my gosh. And when is your first, like frost dates? Like your first frost of the season. So y'all can plant basically from May to what? Probably September, I would imagine. If that long. I know. So we have such a mild climate here. Uh, well, it's mild winters. We have mild winters. <laughs> we have billions of summers, but hey, Gossamania. Um, like, we can have a Thank garden you. year round. We do brassicas and stuff over winter. Brassica. Is that, yeah, mm -hmm. brassica. <laughs> what you think it was? All I, of a like, for a, a split second, I like thought the wrong word. Mid-September to mid-October could be... Wow! That's early. Yeah, that's yeah. early. Wild see, uh, let's see, mid-September, we're still oh, really hot. Wow, that's cool. And we start planting cool weather crops. Uh, Probably September, October. Usually more in September October. September is really pushing it. Yeah, more than more likely in October, and then we're praying for the like cool fronts to come through and keep them from uh, flowering. I can remember some years when I was a kid going trick or treating and sweating my makeup off. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, this year I picked tomatoes. Our last tomatoes <coughs> of the season were picked January first. The peppers were yeah. I think the peppers were January fourth yeah. from the previous year. <coughs> Wait. We have snow in the forecast for Sunday through Wednesday. Uh, oh, gosh. That's when I plant cool weather crops in late September. Right. Usually late September into October, depending on our cool fronts and stuff. Yeah. That's why we can't grow loofah for sponges. Hmm. Oh, yeah. By the way, we sent, uh, we sent seeds to... We sent loofah seeds to Mama Bear in Arizona, and we're gonna see how that goes. I hope I hope her climate. I hope your climate, because I know you're here. Water, Mama Bear, water, 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 water. I hope your climate will uh, will be nice to them. But she was unaware that they need a trellis. They, they are a vine. Oh. Yeah. So I'll have to send a picture or make a video on. Like how well, we need to do a garden update them. anyway we and do. show how these loofahs are growing because, uh, yikes, it probably another week and they'll be to the top of the tra um, chicken tractor. I 
found seeds that won't grow. Oil weather and brassicas in your and my area in spring. That, that seems like maybe an autocorrect. I don't know what yes, oil weather is. Yes, I know. Is. I'm trying to figure out what it could be. Cold weather. Cool yes, weather. by you okay. dawn. Yes, you can grow leaf, leaf figure. Absolutely. Ah. We skipped last year. We didn't grow loofah last year because we didn't need it. We didn't need any. But uh, I've got a feeling we've got seven strong plants right now on the loofah. Yeah, seven out of eight. Yeah, I've got a feeling we're going to be overrun with loofahs. That's okay because I, I that's have a good some. Um, to have. I'm going to send some for gifts. I need loofahs because I need some sponges. Now, Mama Bear, understand these are some very aggressive vines. Like they they but grow, yeah. um, probably six inches in a day. Yeah. They they are going to go up and over and. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are what seeds called? This is wait where. By you dawn, what are the seeds called? Lupa. Lupa seeds. Okay, is, um, Lippy needs lupus, not seeds, right? Three lupus of plants that produced over 150 gourds. They are literally called oh lupus gourd. seeds. <laughs> um, right, not seeds. Okay, I'm going to say I, I should have plenty of lupus. So, um, oh, Lord. We probably, the three plants that I did up front last year. Was there only three plants? No, that was, well, that was two years ago. Okay, it was two years ago. That we, yeah, because I tried to do cucumbers on one side and loofahs on the other. The cucumbers never made it. The loofahs, on the other hand, <laughs> went up and over and then back up again. And <laughs> yeah, you couldn't see through the trellis at all. Tell you what I can do. It's still daylight. Let me go snap a picture and I'll put it on our community tab. Nice. I'll be right back. Wow. <laughs> a tulip festival? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, see, Lippy, I'm I didn't plan any last year and now I'm out. I don't have any left, so um we went ahead and planted some this year and i think i went a little crazy just because um i didn't have any so i planted eight plants in buckets on the chicken tractor well the buckets are inside the chicken tractor and they're gonna um trellis over it well, seven of the eight have come up, and they are probably about four and a half foot tall, like four and a half foot up the trellis now. So, let me stop tank. Well, thank you for coming, Deathball Jedi. Uh, Holland, Michigan has the. Huh. We didn't have the material to plant them to climb. Yeah, they. Right. I don't know if they would do on regular fencing because they're pretty aggressive. Like they get heavy. She asked, "What's a community tag?" Tab. Community tab. Yeah. Um, one second, I'll tell you all about it. <clears throat> it's a. It's going to be a post on our YouTube. Um, yeah, go to our main page our channel main channel page and there should be it should say across the top of home the videos playlists community membership channels about click on community and it'll be the first uh should be the first post first yeah. picture on, under that farmer and adele welcome you can sell our border with lupus yeah but around here people don't buy some weird stuff not many people and the, oh, a loofah is one of those things that a lot of people think is weird. 
Allison's coming down to visit Lippy. Let me find out when that is. <laughs> I'm going to raid Lippy's house. I don't want to go to Lippy's place. I know. You can eat small and mm. young loofah like zucchini. Yes, I've heard that. I've that. never, I've never tried it. I haven't tried it. Prepping plumber, welcome. Great, I saw plumber for ten dollars each. Wow. So Grayman says advice, advice number eight for beginners: plant a garden. It doesn't have to be big, just so you get experience growing plants. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Lippy said it's going to be a party of food she has never tasted. Ooh. Oh. Oh. You know and what? It's Lippy food. So that's like 10 times better than any restaurant you'll ever find. Pack some bigger clothes out. <laughs> because you're going to love the food so much, you're going to eat it all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God. So, on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you saw his eyes get real big too, huh? Must must eat at under eight inches or so. Okay, all right. No raccoon food? What's raccoon food? Like eating raccoon. Oh! <laughs> I haven't tried that yet. Not out of the question. <laughs> Stretchy, Stretchy pants, pants. Yeah, yeah. Good idea. yeah. All right, so um, I want to try to keep interjecting some of these uh, these tips. Um Tip number seven on this list is learn to improvise. Well, and that goes along with the picture you just posted on our community page. Because <laughs> um, that trellis is actually a chicken tractor that we used last year for meat chickens. We built, it we built of two of them. So this year we decided we didn't need one of them. We're only using one for the, the little bitty chickens. So... We are repurposing it. We put a, um, a tarp at the bottom just to kind of cut the grass. And we filled it with um, cattle lick tubs. Those are filled with soil. <laughs> Living a rogue life. Hello and welcome. <laughs> I'm laughing at Lippy's coming. And we have um, loofahs going in them, so they're they're going to trellis up and over hey, the... Arby. Um, Up and over the cattle panel. I have to avoid Libby's <laughs> comment while I'm trying to speak. Uh, the prepping plumber says Cornish cross chicks were three dollars and eighty cents a piece yesterday. Ordered eighty a chicken, a four chicken tractors worth. That's over two two dollars and fifty cents more than last season. Yeah, yeah. I think when I ordered them, they were a dollar seventy four. We went to the grocery store today. Maybe the they local. were two seventy four. The more local one uh we went to market basket not walmart this time and uh the eggs for a basic the cheapest the dozen of eggs, eggs was three dollars a spread. dozen yep and the ground beef the cheapest price the cheapest non-sale price it was four something or... was a little was mm -hmm. a little over four bucks a pound the sale yep. price was like 379 i think it was there was some for five, five ninety-seven a pound. I did see that. Oh, and since since we last talked uh, about it, there has been I think three more um, food processor fires. Fires <laughs> at food processors. I love that bucket trellis housing thing y'all made. <laughs> there was. See, that's a description I would have given. <laughs> so I, I completely understood that. Improvising has been the theme of the last two years. Yeah. Wow. The 99 cent cheapy Clorox is now 529. Jeez. I paid a buck each for my so I got all 16 of them. Wow. That's cheap. Our tractor supply has um baby chicks, <coughs> day old chicks are what 399 a piece. That's crazy. Uh so tip number eight is always clean your tools. Uh, <laughs> we have we have an issue with that because of the humidity, they still rust. Yes, but I found a way to do it with to keep them from rusting, and I haven't tried it yet. But you take a bucket or um, people have told us that in the chats. I know what you're talking about. Bo told me that. 
Well, he may have told you again, but because I remember okay. it's the you take a, a bucket or trough of sand and you add oil to it. Yeah. And then you put your tools down in the sand and it keeps them sharp, clean, and oiled. I want to try to make making a kettle wire arch trellis for raise it. We have so many of them now. I love That's it. what we need to do. We need to set up the um, the tripod and do a video of the two of us setting up that that cattle panel and show how to bend it to get it in there. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. We do have some more uh, of the arches planned to build. <clears throat> wow. So, uh, Aldi was under seventy cents for a dozen eggs. Now a dollar ninety nine or more. While we're talking wow. about garden tools. Wait. Powdered bleach? Where do you get powdered bleach? <coughs> Gosh, tablets. <coughs> Is that in the pool chemicals? I still need to go shopping for pool chemicals. But I need to know what I need to get. Oh, Regan says he's going to bring a drone. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. You know, last on that, got, that imaginary day that he's coming to visit? Last time we got drone footage of the place was... Uh, at the beginning of 2020, when Prep Setter Bob and Miss B oh, came. Oh, that's right. They did that cool footage where he had the drone come up, uh, like, across the pond. Yeah. Yes, that was yeah. pretty awesome that to watch. Really cool. so, Tablets for the pool. While we're on the topic of uh, garden tools, this is my okay. new favorite, uh, which it's Fisker's, Fiskars, I don't know how to say it, Fiskars, Fiskars brand. Uh, this is a Hori Hori. And if you don't know what I mean, Sean, I may send you an e, um, a text on exactly what to get because it's pool season right now, and uh, so there's all kinds of chemicals out and about. Walmart right by the regular bleach, you get thirty. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you understood her accent, Sean. It's oot in a boot. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, I pick it, Sean. Sean is our, our uh, North Shore preparedness. He's our Canadian friend. <laughs> and we joke. I was being serious. Now you see why it doesn't so, take me seriously? That's because I get in this live chat and talk about past. I need to do a better job of cleaning this particular one today. It's made of stainless steel. It's really nice. It's got a... Uh, you use that today. It's though. got a full tang. You can see the the metal goes all the way through the handle there. It's nice and strong. But this is a hoary hoary. If you look at it this way, it's got a bit of a bevel to it, like a like a garden trowel, like a little shovel. It's got a serrated blade on this side and a, a straight blade on this side. It's got a spot here for cutting like uh, string twine, things like that. And it's also got a depth uh, gauge right in <laughs> right in the uh, the blade there. I really love this thing, and it's good and sharp. And it's because of that that bevel in it. I like to go in and just kind of. It gives me about a if if I just follow it around like that, it gives me about a four inch diameter hole, which is perfect. Uh, we did so many of those today, just uh, dropping in comfrey plants without digging up too big of a hole. Yeah, that was pretty nice. <clears throat> My mini shovel looks like that, but wider. Well, this isn't really a shovel. It's It's got a blade on it. It so will cut. I'm going to type it in the chat um, in case you want to look up. I have a blue one, but it's got a forked point, and it's great for pulling out weeds. It's hori hori, H-O-R-I, H-O-R-I, in case you want to look up to get one for yourself. I found that one at our local Ace Hardware. Which There's a carrot man here. Oh, heirloom permaculture. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Hey, carrots were on sale today, and we thought of you. Tired of tornadoes. Probably about as tired as we are of hurricanes, I'd imagine. But mm. seriously, I'm I'm sorry. You're no, I'm worried, with worried, that. worried for Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah, he bought him one, but he didn't buy me one. Oh, in, in addition, it's like it's got this very nice uh, carry case, and it also has a belt loop built in. So I'll wear it right on my side it's i my got side a sturdy on. little hoe at a flea market for five dollars <laughs> sean don't be telling you business he's, 
It, in his video, he he said "dirty little," I mean "sturdy little." <laughs> I could, yeah. That was great. Oh, man. <laughs> I got an elderberry bush today, and for some reason I thought it was a bush, but now I know it gets 12 feet high and 12 feet wide. Okay. That's still, but it's on a shrub that, still, it, but. Okay, for us it's a shrub. <laughs> for most people, that's a tree. You can <laughs> cut it. You, you can, can train you it can, shorter, yes. You can trim it. You can cut the dang thing in half. And it will find a way to come back. You can cut it to the ground if you want to, and it will come back. If you cut it to about, well, there's people, there's commercial growers out there that say cut it down to like a foot tall. You can, and it will get bushier. That's okay. It really depends on what you want out of the plant. Mm -hmm. I like to cut ours about four to five feet tall uh, before the growing season. And then everything that grows above that is young and tender and pliable so that I can pull that down and get the elderberries off of the top. Right. They only get as, as big as you let them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's on my, my list is to get me one of those uh, <coughs> cool little shovel tools. I'd say I need the belt clip, but um, I don't wear a belt. And my, I mean, what am I going to clip it to? When do you cut it? Um, uh, depends early. on your, your climate, your growing zone, but, uh, we oh. like to cut ours before, uh, before it really starts growing again in the spring. Yeah. I can't say dormant season because we don't have one. Right. You don't want to cut it before it freezes. Nine B in Houston. Probably. I like to do ours about January, February. Yeah. So yours is probably going to be about the same. I was thinking if you're if you're far up north, you don't want a deep freeze, like right after you cut it. So I would wait till the springtime. Mama Bear, that community tab is an option that you get after you hit a thousand subscribers. Those Thank that you. don't have a thousand subscribers yet, don't you don't have the community tab. Okay. Um, Olympia's got to go tend to the rabbits and the baby chickies. That's a good excuse. Dark. I'll let you go. <laughs> I think you're giving her permission. <laughs> careful, careful. Here's a halt. Lippy, Lippy's going to come down here and smack the heck out of her. <laughs> and I'm a letter. Uh, Good number. night, Miss Lippy. Tell Buddy that we said hello. And uh, enjoy your night. And we hope to see you soon. At 20, I don't think I can use that tag. Yeah, no. No, not yet. Um, mm. Community tab is now at 500 subs. Oh, that changed. That's okay. a good change. Okay. Uh, tip number nine on our list is set realistic goals. I've been the per I've been the one to set goals for myself that are unattainable, and I feel like such a failure because I just I can't do what I set out to do. So it's it's better to set short term goals that are reachable. It helps to motivate you along the way. All right. I have trouble setting goals because, like, I can't make little goals. I want to see the whole yard done. <laughs> Every morning, we're like pinky in the brain. Like, <laughs> what do you want to do today, brain? <laughs> try to take over the world. <laughs> no, like, every morning, we try to figure out what we're going to do that day. Uh, unless we've got an ongoing project. Oh, yeah. What do you want to do first? <laughs> what do you want to do for supper? So let's kind of map out the day here. Okay. Hook, Mary Beth said hook a carabiner to the sheath and then to your belt loop. The problem is I wear like basketball shorts. They're elastic. There is no belt loops. <laughs> so it would be pretty interesting on where I would have to hook those things. You need to wear a belt type thing like around you like this. And it it could be your like utility belt, like Batman. You could have all sorts of stuff. And then having it here, like not in any kind of belt loops or anything like that, you could like spin it and get to the tool that you need. Like, oh. Make me one like that that holds my 22 on it, too. <laughs> and then I'll be good. Well, you need a you need a knife? Hold on. Uh, spin, spin, spin. It's around here somewhere. <laughs> Until our scissors was peeking on the brain. <laughs> Goals should be reachable. Dreams can be limitless. 
Hey, that, well, I like that. See, and that's my problem. I want to see it all finished, and I have I have trouble like <clears throat> visualizing it finished unless I have something on paper and he won't put it on paper because he don't know. Every so it's hard to follow a project that's in his head, but it's not really in his head. So that's that's my problem. He's like, I want to do this, and I imagine this, and I imagine that. Well, so I say, okay, put it on paper. Sometimes. Well, I can't because I don't know what it's going to look like. <laughs> what? I can't, I can't draw. Well, okay. She's, she's, I want a layout. Today it was talking about the front yard, <laughs> the half acre front yard that we want to develop into a food forest kind of uh, cottage yeah, garden, hodgepodge kind of. <laughs> no, that's uh, what your brain wants. She to says cottage garden. I don't know what to call it. But like I envision these big, uh, these beautiful gardens that you can go and tour and you walk through these little winding paths and stuff. And I'd like a small version of that. That would be awesome. But we also have to build it in such a way that uh, we can maintain it and it doesn't just get so overgrown or because we definitely cannot hire a maintenance person. Uh, no, that ain't happening. Not on the hundred dollars a month sometimes that we get from youtube <laughs> i'm gonna be 60 this year my um, body agrees with that Tammy, my brain sometimes thinks it's 10. Or man five. i'm 46. wait read who is um <laughs> Allergy season. Oh. Mm -hmm. I know. When we got started, I had to go blow my nose. So, uh, oh shoot, what was I saying? I don't know. Nobody oh, has I, any idea what's going me, on there. She wanted me to draw like a layout of what I want the front no, yard to look like. No, just I, an idea. Just kind of a rough, rough draft. Like just rough sketch. I don't know. See? There's Kate. Hey, hey Kate. <laughs> Yeah, change the subject. <laughs> Blame it all on Kate. Oh, she had an amazing day. That's really cool. I'm so happy for you, honestly. I know I'm being silly, but I'm glad you had an amazing day. Now you got to tell us about it. <laughs> Putting you on the spot, Kate. You have the floor. No. Yeah, so like, I've, as I envision things, particular things, like I'll tell you about them. Like right here, like we were out there. I know, summer. but you have to kind of. I don't know. My brain is paths, rocks, plants. Amazing, not in a good way. Oh. Oh. Oh, Kate, I'm sorry. I, I know it was a big step for him. You got the wrong idea. I know it was needed, but that's still that's that's a really. Really hard thing to go through. A really hard step to take. Damn. North Shore says my brain is sometimes three and three quarters going on five. <laughs> four and three quarters going on five. Oh, he went four <clears throat> days without eating or drinking. Oh, man. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. I put you on the prayer list, but you're already there. <laughs> I already wrote you guys on it. Oh, that's rough. We had a pretty, uh, about a rough news yesterday, too. My mom messaged me. They had to put their 14-year-old chihuahua down yesterday morning. That's the one I used to, like, dog, dog sit. sit all the time. So, yeah. <clears throat> Almost a I'm, year. I'm praying for them because that's, that's hard. It's hard to lose a fur baby. Almost a year to the day that we had to make the decision with Angel, mm -hmm. our golden retriever. That was May 6th of last year. Yeah, it'll be Friday, I believe. My contacts are giving Today, me Yeah, today's the 4th. By the way, may the 4th be with you. Oh, don't be dumb. It's er a thing. Tomorrow is Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, my mom's dog was, um, she was a 14-year-old <clears throat> chihuahua named Breezy. 
my dad named her that because he's a Saints fan. And um, spoiled little dog. Very, very spoiled little dog. But she she was she had some heart issues and some arthritis issues and then she stopped eating and it it was a a big mess but yeah yeah why am I cheese back I don't know but it's funny oh it's okay. probably about May the fourth yeah oh. <laughs> okay what's your next uh, tip number 10 on this list is learn to be flexible. Uh, and I don't think they're talking about stretching. Although that would be a good one too, though. It would. Stretching is very so important. I so benefit from stretching. Um, I yoga. actually had a, a, a pull in my back or something the other day. And oh, oh <laughs> man, that really sets you some limits. Good part is I won't have to drive 25 miles one way several times each day to take care of or pick him up off the floor because he fell. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The shorts from Spaceballs. You're going to miss that, though, Kate. Okay? I promise. Not, not so much the drive, <laughs> but you're going to miss being the caretaker. I know I do with Danny. So uh, being flexible. Uh, you never know what's going to happen on the homestead. You could have a sick animal that just suddenly takes your time or like it could, you might have a hurricane that right. totally changes things. You, you just never know it. You got to be flexible. I, I agree. No, no, we've, we've got a 14 year old Chihuahua and she's, she's my baby. <laughs> I can bend over and touch my toes. Is that flexible enough? <laughs> hey, I know somebody who can't do that. Yes, I can. <laughs> okay, on a good day, you can. But there's, when I do, there's something in my back that goes, <laughs> like it just releases suddenly. That's probably not good. I'll be right back. <clears throat> Stop being flexible at 50. Uh, I started having more severe body issues when I was, let's see, probably right at 36, 37. That's when uh, I started to get this weird pain in my foot that progressed into sciatica. Hmm. Uh, so to finish out this list, tip number 11 is know your limits. And that's kind of what we're talking about here knowing your limits the older i get the shorter those limits become but i would i would say uh, not only physical limitations but uh financial limitations uh you know back in the day uh, i used to be a i used to be what they call a yes man because i was I was an immature, I guess you could say an immature Christian. Just um, coming back to, coming back into my faith, I guess. And uh, just trying to be, I was, the, uh, I was the dad of three young ladies. And uh, <clears throat> just trying to, I was in a place where I was trying to strengthen my faith. And I really thought that part of that was to, help everyone that I could. But in doing so, I found, I, I started to come to the realization that I had to find the balance because if I gave too much to just everyone, then I ended up taking away from my own family, whether it be money or food or even just my time. <clears throat> And I really had to learn how to respectfully say no sometimes. And uh, I guess you could say that goes along with knowing your limits. Because truthfully, another tornado is headed for Seminole. Oh my goodness. That's terrible. 
God helps those who help themselves. Yeah. It, it's hard to say no. If I could, if I had it in, you've got to take the time to fill your own cup up in order to be able to pour it out and fill up other people's cups. Obviously, that's a, uh, a figure of speech. <coughs> Mrs. Lone Star Pioneering. Well, hello there. Yeah, so um, I really, not to toot my own horn, but I have a giving heart, and I, sometimes it becomes too much of a giving heart, and I have to, I have to control myself because I would love to just give and give and give. Like I have trouble not giving away, not just giving away all of the plants that we pot up and um, I got to remember, well, wait a minute, that's, <laughs> we got to sell those in order to have money to continue to run this homestead, you know, because uh, I really, I just want to help people. And that's, I remember on that note, I remember I was about probably 15 years old, uh, just feeling like, <clears throat> You know, when you're 15, when you're mid-teens, still in high school, you don't really, most people don't really know what direction they want to go in life, right? Canadian, good to see you. Welcome. Um, and so, like, I was at that point. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I, and and I just lay there in bed and I, I was talking to God because I don't, a lot of times I don't just, I don't really make a formal prayer. I just kind of have a conversation with God and my thoughts. And and I said, I remember laying there and I said, God, I just want to help people. I want, to, I want the type of life, I want whatever the career, whatever, I want to be able to help people. And I really believe that God has given me the opportunities in my life to do that. I was a volunteer firefighter for off and on for nine years, and then I became a career firefighter. Um. I learned some some skills that I was able to help to share with other people. Like because before I was a fireman, a career fireman, I was a flooring installer. So there was <coughs> there was a lot of people that I was able to help through through that. Uh, I was self employed. I set my own prices. I you know I was able to give people deals as uh, as you know anybody who needed a deal. I was able to make those assessments. You know what I mean. Eggs have been the thing I've been giving too much, giving away too much lately. Yeah, Huga, um, with that whole bird flu thing, you might want to hang on to those. That might be a good idea. We do have a video on uh, dehydrating eggs if you know if you need a way to store them long term. Fun fact about eggs: Did you know that in in uh, Europe they don't wash? They don't wash their eggs, uh, so they're able to keep the eggs on the counter, kind of like what we do on our own farm. Uh, East Tennessee, hello, well, Reagan, if I have the time, <laughs> I sure will. Uh, yeah, so in in America they they collect the eggs from the chicken farm and they wash them and bleach them. And main the main reason why is because the conditions in the chicken farms are so freaking disgusting. And then that's why they have to be refrigerated. And and also by the time you get those eggs from the grocery store, by the time the, those eggs hit the grocery store shelves, they're at least fifteen days old. So there's no such thing really as a fresh egg from the grocery store. Thank you for sharing that video link, Mind and Body Co. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Ask him to plan something. It's not going to happen. His plan is all in his head. Yeah. Yeah. 
This is true. I have, I really have trouble. If somebody has the key to my head <coughs> and unlock this thing, <laughs> you'll you better be ready though, because it's weird in there. Well, water glassing eggs is not something that I've tried. I'm not opposed to it. Trying to get on this job. Oh, Susanna. Diamond Willow. Sorry it took you so long to get in. But I'm glad you're here now. Uh, let me do this. Whoops. That's not what I meant to do. All right. Lone Star Pair. Wow, let me try that again. Lone Star Pioneering. Hey, Les, how you doing? <coughs> God has the key. You're right. Wow. You just laid that on me, didn't you? Prepping for life. Good to see you, buddy. I just recognized you. I'm glad to see you. I've been to your channel a few times. Yeah, so we're we're done with the list. So if anybody wants to just like throw out some prepper advice, that would be amazing. Uh, <clears throat> prepping, homesteading, gardening, um, just like blow my mind with something that I have not thought about. That has happened so many times tonight. I thought a guy was trying to steal a bicycle. He was looking. It was his bike. Oh. I bought him a bunch of groceries. That is so cool. Cool that you were able to do that. Not cool that he, obviously, not cool that he was feeling weird. God, I, I, I strongly believe that God puts us in places where we can, he uses us to bless others. I, I truly believe that. <clears throat> uh, we've, I can go back and talk about what was it? That particular one, it was tip number six, <clears throat> avoid unnecessary expenses. Uh, and like I, like I said before, that was, that was pretty much our number one. When we started, when we made the decision to start moving toward a self-sufficient life, we started to really evaluate the things that we were spending money on. I'm back. Uh, and and some of those things were just <laughs> an absolute waste. Some things are just some things that we buy nowadays are just nothing but <clears throat> nothing but status symbols. Like mm -hmm. like I know people. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say this because it's probably going to be offensive. But like I know people who. Just they they have to have a trampoline. They have to have an above ground pool. And I always call that that's like mm, that's I can't say it. I can't, I can't say what I normally call it, but like that's that's trashy status symbols is what that is. I was fixing my buddy's wife's banjo. She's <laughs> So I just wanted to learn. You need adjusting. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's cool. Okay, Sean said put liquid beach, bleach <clears throat> in eyedroppers and keep in your bug out bag for emergency water purification. That's a pretty good idea. Label them clearly. Yes. <laughs> don't leave. Yeah. Don't leave the. Uh, 
the eye drops label on there. Okay, you missed my comment back to Southern Boy, and I think he missed it too because he hasn't uh, responded. How dare you describe me perfectly? Because uh, uh, he said you could do it, you could make a plan. So I said, Can and Will are two different things, kind of like you coming to visit. <laughs> no. <laughs> <clears throat> we're gonna see he says he's coming what's your thoughts on prepping coloring books crayons and such we put a lot into that type of stuff i this is new to me i'm not following what you mean is that for like boredom buster kind of things yeah is that just like yeah right is that a just to cure boredom or are you like is it a prepping themed coloring book to start children learning early uh what which is it i'm not sure <coughs> um you can get droppers though that um for like essential oils the bleach is i don't think the bleach is going to break those down because those are usually glass the cat is attacking your hat right there i don't know what's going on <laughs> probably smells like i don't even want to know what that thing smells like Filth. <laughs> Sweat. No pool, yes, on the trampoline. Why, yes, on the trampoline? He said, or she said, describes me perfectly. Not the pool, but the trampoline. When I said what I said a minute ago. Oh. <clears throat> okay. For kids and such, for oh. boredom. Oh, okay. Okay. But I like the thought of prepping coloring books for kids. Yeah, that just, that kind of a yeah well and there's people that are that, that are picking up like um adult coloring books and things like that at the dollar stores and prepping those and because i mean let's face it when the <coughs> when the power is out the internet's down that means no more phone no more googling no more you know nothing i'm gonna have my head in those foxfire books right like well, when day the, in and day out when the power when the power goes out and the internet goes out you might see you might see your kids' faces instead of the top of their heads for for the first time in a long time. No, uh, I can't say that about my kids though. Uh, Abby, Abby, we well, won't see Abby, Abby at all. <laughs> Abby's been working yeah. a lot. I think she's gonna finally have a day off after what twelve days. I think is what she said, and that's yeah. a maybe. Yeah. Abby works. She's seventeen. And she works two part-time jobs and goes to school. Well, she she does school from home. Right. So she works hard. Packs of cards, yes. Um, board games. You know, but make sure there's more than two of you, or <laughs> you know, or you can play. You can find a two-player board game. Kate, I agree. The Foxfire books are pricey, and we probably would not have <laughs> them if they weren't gifted to us by our great friend, Mind and Body Co. Mm -hmm or Henry at Mind and Body Co. But Kate, you know where I live and you can <coughs> always come over and visit and read them as much as you want while you're here. I knew that mama bear. <laughs> so my hat smells like a book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, the only thing you guys didn't touch on, but I know you touched on it previously, prepping one of my mind. Kerosene lamps and other forms of off-grid lighting. Uh, yeah, that would be that would be a must because your flashlights and your batteries are only going to last for so long. <laughs> However, in the South, we have these awesome things called uh, hurricane lamps. They're great, but they put off some heat. Oh, man. So in the summertime, we don't want to use those. So if there's no power, we're going to bed when it's dark and we're waking up when it's, when it's light. East Tennessee, have a great night and good day tomorrow. Yeah, because you need Monopoly fights during the apocalypse. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> Is it? No, what, what me and my friend, I mean, it's not an off-grid thing, but uh, what me and my friends got in the most fights over was freaking Mario Kart. Oh, yeah, you're not going to have that when the power oh. goes out. Oh, my goodness. I buy a lot of cheap solar walkway lights. Yeah. Yes. Um, Walmart has them or had them. I don't know what they are this year, but um, hey, Bill, like, they're a dollar, dollar twenty-five a light, and they work great. Stock them away. 
You don't have to pull the tabs out and use them right away. Box them up and keep them in, in storage, you know. Amanda, Albany Mountain, life with Glenda and Chuck. Hey, Amanda, I was talking about you earlier today, <laughs> and yes, it was good. <laughs> um, Sorry about that. I was raving about the mullein seeds I got, and I have no idea what I did with them. Oh, boy. I, had, I planted the mullein, and now I can't find the little pack of seeds. I think I had like three or four seeds left. You know, we were talking earlier today, and the seeds fits this category. Totally fits this category. We were talking about how we we tend to hoard things mm -hmm. that we could so be benefiting from. Like this five-gallon bucket of super strength fish emulsion that a, a friend of ours bartered with us. Uh, we could totally be using that and putting that on our plants in the gardens and stuff. We haven't even cracked the seal yet. I know, but I'm using the small bottle. My plan is to, once I empty the small well, bottle, okay. is to refill it. Okay. You don't have to defend yourself. I'm just, I'm giving an example. Oh, I do, though. I, And I think that's some of the way that I was raised. My parents still do it. My parents live in a four-bedroom home with three freezers, <laughs> and it's just the two of them. And they stock away food and stock away food, and they don't need to do that. But that's the way my grandparents Your raised grandparents them. And my grandparents <coughs> lived through the Depression, and they kept a lot of those uh, those mindsets and those uh, those ways of life <laughs> all through the rest of their lives. And and I think we picked up some of that. See. <clears throat> Now he's trying to get me to go visit somebody else. Yeah. Because <laughs> he knows he ain't coming. <laughs> no. I would love it if, if a Southern boy can come If we only had visit. minutes to evacuate our houses, what to take? We have been in that situation. Not minutes. Mm. Not quite that short amount of time. But we have been in the situation where we've had to evacuate due to hurricanes. We actually, <coughs> I have a vacuum seal bag with all of our insurance policies and birth certificates. birth certificate. All of our important documents are put inside of a, um, a, vacuum seal a bag. really big vacuum seal bag. And it's got plenty of room on the top of it. So all I have to do is plug in my machine Suck, the, suck some of the air out and seal it. Why? Why Why the vacuum seal back? Because usually when we're leaving, it's hurricane. If we get stuck in the evacuation route or anything like that and our vehicle gets damaged, you know, and it's in with all of our stuff. There's a lot of... There's, there's a way this stuff is not going to get wet and we have ways to identify it. There's then. a lot of water associated with the hurricane, whether it be falling or flooding right thank you Susanna I did cut my hair I cut six inches off of it <clears throat> uh, we have no friends in this area so it's a hermit's drill well Ugh. it's not a good place to be when the shit hits the fan because uh, I'll tell you that that's one thing from a prepper standpoint that we didn't talk about tonight yet uh, that would be a, a, a prepper tip of mine to give out is uh, lone wolves are not in a great shape. It, it takes a community. It takes a village. Yep. <clears throat> and the reason being, uh, you know, bartering and trading is, is so important. You can't do it all by yourself. It's just not going to happen. My parents are still preppers. Kaylin says, too bad my parents didn't continue the prepping mindset that their parents had, especially my maternal grandparents, even after they retired. Yeah. A lot of people, my grandparents' ages, <laughs> you know, that lived through the Depression and everything, um, really scrounged and saved, and they kept everything. They hoarded things because... You never knew when you were going to be able to purchase something. Mm. Purple Book Club says it takes the village people. 
That's why I do. Hi, <laughs> <coughs> Warren Lewis, welcome. We have no way of moving out. We tried to sell in the highest bid. Oh, mm. yikes. Uh, oh, look, I wasn't even trying, and we reached uh, our thumbs up goal for the night. <laughs> Agreed on Lone Wolf. That's a bad idea. We're still trying to build our mag. Hard to find folks in Kansas with the same mindset. It's it's really difficult here. It's difficult here yeah. to find people with the same mindset that are outspoken about it. One thing that I've noticed is don't talk to people about prepping or mag or, you know, don't you... Try to try to steer away from the prepping buzzwords. Yeah, we go like we'll go to the feed store and we'll meet somebody there. Hey, you're good at gardening. You grow this. We grow this. You know, we could trade. Yeah. And that helps to, to, to build those bartering network connections. Um, feed stores. Uh, oh, man, a big hit of ours is uh, farmers markets. Love farmers markets for that kind of thing. That kind of networking. Yeah. <clears throat> You two. I mean, we found Southern Boy Prepper who lives, I don't know how far away De Quincey is from here. I don't know, 60 miles away, not even. Yeah, about a 30 minute drive. Uh, we found Southern Boy Prepper in North Shore Preparedness's chat one night. And yeah. North, North Shore North lives in Canada. North Shore lives in Canada. Southern Boy Prepper and I, uh, and us, we're both in Southwest Louisiana. Yeah. It's weird. But it happened, and it happened for a reason, and it's cool. Uh, just think if all you all you had right now uh, craft fairs good idea flea markets just think if all you had right now is where it's all you <laughs> get you would reuse repair and wear things out yep for sure well we do that kind of anyway uh, we try to be as frugal with things as we can um I try to reuse as much as we possibly can. When we added on to the chicken chicken coop, um, we did it for free in an afternoon. Mm -hmm. We used the building that we weren't using anymore. We just kind of drug it over. And all of the materials to complete it <clears throat> were reused from the homestead. Stuff that we just kind of held on to. Thrift stores. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of thrift stores around here. Prepping for life, one way that one way to start a conversation potentially is, um, you know, hey, uh, things are getting weird nowadays. You know, things things are looking not looking as positive as they did a couple of years ago. Uh, what are you doing about it? You know, that sort of thing, and it could easily. Uh, turn into a real con uh, an in-depth conversation about uh, teaming up. I mean, we've, we've networked with like uh, for us, for example, we don't, we don't raise hogs or pigs. We got in contact with somebody who does mm -hmm. same with beef. Um, what else? My, we've got uh, a guy moonshine. who does firewood <laughs> moonshine. Uh, another one does uh, he's got an E tank set up to, uh, to redo cast iron uh, our thrift stores around here there used to be a couple but um since the hurricane and covid <clears throat> oh well uh, yeah you things, know it just things but, have been kind of rough the last few years so thrift stores are far and few between 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 covid and all of the the weather uh, disasters that we've endured here in Southwest Louisiana, a lot of the small businesses have been very much affected, if not wiped out. There you go. Kate said, <laughs> I share my experience of saving sugar. I bought it for a low price, saved it for a year, and oh, saved it, and a year later it was tripled in price, and I still had some of my cheap stuff. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yep, co-op, garden centers, tractor yeah. supply. Yeah. You know, all these places are great. At and great places to like start up conversations. <clears throat> hey, you have chickens, you know. Sometimes you can get a, a good idea of who's who by what they're purchasing. Um, I would probably try to steer away from uh, gun shops, gun stores, because I, I have this saying. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm sorry, I've got a frog in my throat tonight. Only have 300 pounds of sugar uh, in the dresser. I, I've got this saying: it is beware of the prepper who stocks ammo and nothing else. Yeah. Because when when things go sideways, he's going after the people who have stocked up everything. Right. If someone is buying 20 pound 20 pound bags of chicken feed, you can you can be pretty sure they have chickens. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of times, too, at uh, I know at our local uh, feed and seed stores, they have the, like little bulletin boards and stuff, and, and people will leave business cards and what they have or what, what yeah. they offer, what they do, that yeah. kind of thing. Uh, I've, I've gotten in touch with some people on Facebook. We've actually met with people <laughs> that work at uh, Tractor Supply that are great with knowledge. Uh, there's the one girl in um, Not Jenny's. Michigan Daffodil. I don't remember her name, but she is full of chicken knowledge. Yeah. And there's a lot of th a lot of times that we will go in there and just kind of chit chat for half an hour uh, about different things, and I learn something every time I go. Um, she was in our live stream a couple of nights ago, uh, a couple of weeks ago. We exchanged the email, but she oh, can we. <clears throat> I, don't, I missed something. Oh, I know Mama Bear says we have one thrift store and it costs almost as much as Walmart. Uh, yeah. You're probably talking Goodwill. Uh, Mine and Bonnie Co. says plus ammunition is dangerous to store and it can set a house completely on fire if not stored correctly and makes hell of a wreck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ammo alone is not going to set a house on fire, but if a house, if a house fire does start and there's ammo in the vicinity, yes, it could very much accelerate that fire because of all the gunpowder, obviously. Right. Uh, trade empty egg cartons. <clears throat> I get with a local who keeps bees. His chickens fill those cartons up in a short time. Huh. That's pretty neat. Similar community, I don't have draft animals, but my neighbors, my neighbor does. But I collect draft equipment, sickle mowers, hay rakes, plows, disc plows, all kinds yeah. of stuff. That sounds like teamwork. And that's the Cajun homestead. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know he was in him. You didn't hear me say hi to him? Nope. Vacuum. Slip that in between your words. <laughs> vacuum seal ammo. <coughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, those thick straws that you can get, like at uh, okay, like for malt uh, milkshakes and stuff. It's a slightly bigger diameter drinking straw, plastic, of course. Um, Twenty-two ammo fits perfectly inside there, and you just use a lighter, heat up the end, and seal it with a pair of pliers. Um, Southern boy, I'm going to entertain this. He says he's coming. Does he need to bring anything for the barbecue? Oh, you're barbecuing? No, you're barbecuing. You talked about that the last time he said he was coming. It's getting hot now. You waited too long. <laughs> and <coughs> no, seriously, it's, it's probably not too late. I could barbecue without having sweat steaks. Oh, that's... It is gross, isn't it? Yeah, that's why we don't barbecue in July. Stop. We, <laughs> we open the beehives in July. Oh, uh, I know. Not that we want to. <clears throat> okay, it says, my bee guy and I are now exchanging plants. He has several vines I want, and I'm air laying some, some trees for him. That's awesome. That's, that's cool. awesome. 
I love trading plants. Although I do have a hard time sometimes giving away my, my plant babies. Yeah, we've done that a few times with uh, with different things in, in the straw. Um, I've, I've done salt for camping. Seasoning, yeah, those are good know. for um, little seasoning packs, especially for camping. You know, stuff like that for like a bug out bag, you can keep um, seasonings because us Cajuns got to have some seasoning on our food. <laughs> I can't eat them bland. I will. I'll bring wild onions with me if I got to. Yeah. By the way, we got those what from uh, Rachel. <clears throat> uh, you can take Vaseline, uh, Vaseline soaked cotton oh. ball, and stuff it down inside that straw and seal the ends. There's your fire starter. You don't need sweat sticks, right? <laughs> <laughs> just about time to start seeding up here oh, oh wow. wow we are part of your community we'll get our topics going that we discussed he says he's coming we'll see we might have to go live if he actually shows up <laughs> even if it's just for a few minutes dehydrate and powder vegetables and then store them in straws that's not a bad idea too that's that's a great idea. Wow. Right? Yeah, because that's some some quick and easy nutrition to add to like a bug out bag. <clears throat> that's a so, new one. I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, that's a good idea. I have some super greens, super yeah. greens and straws. That's awesome. And you know, guys, they sell these super green things. In these big containers at Walmart, okay, and I say big containers, it's eh, like a coffee yeah, can, a little bit smaller. Dehydrated water is virtually weightless. Yeah. <laughs> these super green powders are like ten dollars for a container. Well, I don't know what's in there. I don't know what kind of chemicals are mixed in with those greens to make them stay, <coughs> you know, good for longer and this and that. So. Um, he was taking, he was using some of those in smoothies for a little while. So, you know what? Uh-uh. Nope. I can make that. If you happen to come across veggies, like, and things <coughs> on sale, get for cheap, dehydrate your veggies. I get Leafy that, greens like lettuce, spinach, you know, yeah. Ammo collecting is, is as much about barter. Yeah, I, I failed to mention that. Thank you for adding that. It's good co to to collect <clears throat> ammo and stock up on ammo, but it's not okay to stock up only oh. guns and ammo. Oh, somebody the other day said I know one of, those, uh, one of those mainstream mainstream uh, news channels was talking about so and so had a, a stockpile of ammo, like six hundred rounds. <laughs> 600 rounds. That's not a stockpile. I don't know, but it's just the fact that they referred to 600 rounds as a stockpile. <laughs> Mama Bear says she's got plenty of dehydrated <laughs> water in the desert. <laughs> we have a lot of hydrated air. That's what we have. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to have to start shutting down because it's uh, 9 o'clock. Oh, wow. Yeah, we've been alive for two hours. Oh and my goodness. Some of you amazing folks have stuck with us for the entire two hours. <laughs> like Poor I, know, things. I know Mind and Body Co. is here in the background. He shows up every now and then in the chat. Southern Boy Prepper has been there curious. <laughs> Southern Boy Prepper has been here through the whole two hours tonight, and so has Mama Bear. Well, except well, once she woke up, because she fell asleep waiting for us to go live. <laughs> but she was here. Well, uh, Courtney is live. That's Wait. uh that's wide family farm, W H Y D E. You can do greens very easily. <laughs> you can also do microgreens every uh very easy. In most cases, less than two weeks for microgreen seeds. That's something I need to do a little more research on is the microgreens. There you go. Wide that's, family farm. Isn't that like sprouts? Is it the same thing? Oh, Tammy said six hundred rounds is like for a pellet gun only. So if you're looking for something I have more to... PBs than that. If you're looking, if you're looking for some place to go once we end our live stream, Wide Family Farm is is live. 
Courtney is an amazing host, and uh, let her know that okay. the Broussard sent you. Not the I'd same thing, but similar. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, microgreens are more developed than sprouts. Okay. We need to get um, Reagan on a live stream. We do, if he'd ever take a break. I know. <laughs> Guy works all the time. He got to just start, like, videoing for work. But, you know, I mean, he had time to go to his way homestead. Just kidding. <laughs> Just you really going to rub that in, no, aren't you? No, I knew you no. were. I knew that was going to come. I up. just wanted to throw that in as just a little jab. <clears throat> but I'm happy that Reagan was able to visit with Doug and Shelly from His Way Homestead. That was cool. Anyhow. Oh, Mom Bear says she was here for the whole two hours. Anyhow. You left her out. We're, yeah, no, I did not <laughs> mention Mama Bear. <laughs> Sprouts usually don't have the second set of leaves microgreens do. Ah. So that's really the only difference. Sprouts are okay. Sprouts don't need any dirt either. This is one of the places I know. Oh, okay. Awesome. I can get that out of the chat. Cool. Cool. Mine and Body Co. is like amazing for... YouTube sources. I swear the man knows everybody can, and knows where to find everything. <coughs> He's like the encyclopedia of YouTube. <laughs> that's that's how that's how we do. We're live. Mind and Body Co. sits in the background. And if there's something that we're unsure of, he's like, whoop. <clears throat> he Googles it up real quick and shares a link with oh, us. Oh yeah, but you don't understand. We have conversations all week long. I'll, and I'll tell him, hey, I'm looking at, you know, such and such. And I swear, he's like, like, zippity doo dah typer. And I don't know how he does it, but it's like, boom, boom, boom. And within seconds, there's a YouTube video. And you're a local farmer's market. So it's it's great. Huh. Huh. Well, I've been in the community for many years, probably at least 10 to 15. With oh, me. Cool. There you go. So, all see, right. he knows everybody, and he knows all this stuff. So, <laughs> any, any parting words? Prepping for life. Uh, prepping for life. Thank you for joining us tonight. It was really great to have you. Uh, prayer requests. Uh, parting advice. Anything before we ideas close on topics the for next tonight. week? Oh, that would be a good idea. Topics. If you guys have something that you would like to, uh, for us to research or look into or um, have a topic on, we need to do the garden update. Not that's a video. Well, right. I'm just saying. Pray for yeah. Pray you for Kate's it. parents for sure. Yeah. Don't forget, Wide Family Farm is is live right now if you're looking for a place to go let courtney know that we sent you i might jump over there in a little bit too all, all right, right guys so until next week next I got week you, is going to be thursday I got you. back to our normal uh thursday like thursday night stream okay. next week at 7 p.m central There's a prayer request from from Gary and from Tammy. Listen, we're going to leave the chat open so as long as uh, so that we don't miss any prayer requests. But we're going to sign off. And uh, if you have a prayer request that you're typing right now or you haven't typed yet, don't stop typing. We will see it. I'm going <laughs> to keep the chat up for um, a good amount of time. Until you know everybody's out of here and stuff, and I'll be the only one in the in the chat room, and uh, I'll get them all down because I'll go back through the chat and stuff. All righty. So guys, until next week. Good night. Thursday night next week. Good night and God bless. Stay safe, guys. May the fourth be with you. No. <laughs>